Uh, I want to invite a friend of mine, Mick Duncan, uh, to join me up here. Uh, yesterday, the elders and uh, pastors had a, I said to Nate, we had a retreat. He goes, that was no retreat. That, 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 that was a day's work of, of planning and mapping and looking forward. And, and it was, it was a good day. And we invited Mick to come along and, and just sort of support us as we did that, that we didn't get lost in our own thinking, someone external to make sure that we, we travelled okay. And uh, it was a great day and looking forward to sort of unpacking some of that uh, over the next little while. Um, and I said to Mick, well, while you're in town, do you want to come and stay an extra day and help us out on a Sunday? And he said yes. So it's a real privilege to have Mick here. Mick's uh, served in Baptist churches. He served in Baptist roles. Um, his most recent role, well, when I first got here, you were a part-time regional leader. Uh, that's where we first had our first conversation. And then you took a step up and were the leader of the regional leaders. And now you're taking a step back and <laughs> re reassessing things. Yeah. Re resettlement is your word, isn't yeah, it? That's so right. That's right. Yeah. But, uh, but Mick's going to uh, share the word with us today uh, uh, you know, in, on the theme of authentic community with us. And uh, um, I just want to pray for him uh, as he comes to speak with us. So would you join with me? Jesus, we, we want to thank you that Mick has been able to join us today. We ask that you bless his words. Uh, we pray that we would be open to what you want to say through the scriptures today. And that uh, we would notice where your spirit is speaking. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Hello, people. Hello. So for those who may not know, um, I currently live in Whanganui. So we relocated from South Auckland about seven years ago. Um, my wife, Ruby, would love to be here, but she has meetings in Auckland. Um, so we have three children and seven grandkids, and they all live in Auckland. From Whanganui to Auckland, going up the middle, it's a six-hour drive. <laughs> so um, Ruby uh, is a potter. So she started, any potters in the room? She started pottery um, seven years ago, um, and now Nadia Lim buys from her. So she's doing really well. Um, on our property, we, there was this cottage and I used it as a study. But when her pottery was going like this, you know, she was selling more and more. I said, you have this, and I'll just be at the kitchen bench sort of thing, you know. So, um, yeah, so we're in Whanganui East, and we've got a, a 1924 built house. So just a little personal intro from us, uh, or from me. Um, my title for this morning is Throw the Monkey Back. So could you just repeat that title with the person next to you? Throw the monkey back. <laughs> um, throw the monkey back or throw back the monkey. Um, and the text that, you know, Clayton uh, kindly gave to me in and around authentic community. Uh, don't you love this man? <laughs> Look, I've got to know Clayton... Oh, I don't know, since you've got to New Zealand, really. And I find we click. You know, there's something we just... And he popped in the other day, and he had coffee, and, and um, yeah, I just like this man. <laughs> don't like all men. <laughs> <laughs> but I like this guy. He's a good bloke. Um, uh, and I think this is my fifth visit to North Point. I think I've been here five times, all up, over the decades. So there you go. If you've got the ancient text, okay, I don't know if you have, but if you've got the ancient text that still speaks today, um, I'd like to read this passage that Cl Clayton gave me. <laughs> uh, that's just, you know, a pastor insider joke. Um, <laughs> Acts chapter 6 goes like this, verse 1. Around that time, as the number of disciples increased, the Hellenists, uh, you know, a particular people group, if you like, raised a dispute with the Hebrews, another particular people group, because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So there's a bit of unfairness going on here. Um, so the 12, you know, the leaders, called the whole crowd of disciples together. Listen, they said, it wouldn't be right for us to leave the word of God and to wait on tables. 
So brothers and sisters, choose seven from among yourselves who are well spoken of and filled with the spirit and wisdom. We will put them in charge of what needs to be done in this matter. We will continue to pay attention to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the whole gathering was pleased with what they said. So that's where I want to leave it um, in terms of this text. Now, there's a scrap going on, okay? There's an argument. There's a disagreement. When did you last have a fight with someone? Because I've been told you're a transparent group here by Clayton. Uh, tell the person next to you what was your last argument. Go to it. Okay, friends, um, don't give too much detail. <laughs> I have another question by way of introduction this morning. Who do you often argue with? Now, don't share yet. Who do you often argue with? I mean, there's a disagreement, there's a dispute in that story that I read out from the book of Acts. Who do you often argue with and who do you seldom argue with? So could I have the Shona, is it? Could I have the first slide up? Now, I don't, can you read that? Yeah. yeah. See, it goes from naught to 10, naught being hardly ever. In the middle, yeah, sometimes. On the right, yeah, more often. There are four groups. Don't you just love it when I come here? Uh, there are four groups. Your peers, you know, friends, people of similar age, Family members, people at school or people at work, church. Give each of those a number. So if you very rarely fight in your family, you put down two. <laughs> okay? But if you often fight at church, well, you give it a good nine. Do you see what I'm getting at? So with the person next to you, do your worksheet. Go to it. Okay, here we go. Um, let's do a show of hands. Show of hands. <laughs> oh, you're, you're a good Baptist, you love to vote. Um, show of hands. Did you give a two for any of those groups? You don't have to say which one. Okay. Did you give an eight or nine above for any of those groups? <laughs> okay. Now, here's my third intro question. When you are in conflict, what, how do you respond? What's your go-to reaction? Okay, could we, Shona, could we have the next slide up, thanks? Okay, now I'm gonna run you through these. So, on a bad hair day, which is every day for me, obviously, on a bad hair day, which one do you go to? Which is your go-to reaction response when you're in conflict with whoever? I mean, are you a yielder? Oh, you always give in, you're right, I'm wrong. Are you an avoider? I gotta get out of here, I hate this. Are you a compromiser? Oh, come on, win, win, lose, lose, 50-50. <laughs> are you a resolver? I'm gonna fix this. Are you a competitor? I'm gonna win it. 
Tell the person next to you. If you know the person next to you, tell them what you think they are. No, no, no. <laughs> Okay, friends, here we go. Okay, how many, let's see what we're like as a community in conflict. How many yielders in the room? Show of hands? Any half hands then? Uh, I see a handful. How many avoiders? Whoa. Yeah, that's Baptist. Okay. How many compromises? Oh, nice. How many, you know, people who just kind of want to fix everything? My wife is a fixer, you know? How many fixers in the room? Okay. How many competitors in the room? <laughs> oh, okay. Now, here's a question I have. In our text this morning, keep that up, Shona. In our text this morning, which one was the res response to the reaction of the disciples, if any? Yeah. I actually think the disciples or the leaders were none of these. <laughs> it, in other words, they didn't yield. They didn't, when the people came to them, you know, grumbling as they were, they didn't yield, but nor did they avoid. Nor did they say, oh, this is a secondary issue, compromising. Nor did they actually fix it, because they asked others to fix it. Do you get that? They said, you choose, you do, you fix. They didn't fix it. But nor did they compete and say, oh, you're wrong. You know what I mean? They did none of these things. But don't get me wrong, they're all good. When is it right to yield? Well, when you're wrong. When is it right to avoid? When right relationship is sometimes more important than right opinion. When is it right to compromise? Well, when it is a secondary issue. When is it right to resolve it? When you can. When is it right to compete? Well, if it's a life and death issue, major issue, it's okay to compete. Do you see what I'm getting at? But what's that? <laughs> but the disciples did none of those. In fact, the disciples added something else. And it goes like this. These group of people came. They, they were grumbling. They wanted the attention of the disciples. They soon got the attention of the disciples. And, and they kind of wanted to get the attention of the disciples to throw them the problem. Okay? And that's what we do with one another sometimes. You know, we throw another person the problem. And what did the disciples do in response? Throw back the monkey. And you're saying in the text this morning, that is not even mentioned, Mick. <laughs> but there's a certain action that is done by the disciples, and they threw the problem back. In other words, these people here, they threw the disciples a monkey, and when that happens, when someone throws you a monkey, third slide. You get a monkey on your back. Has that ever happened to you? Someone throws something to you, they have a problem, they throw it to you, and now you have a monkey on your back. Okay, show of hands, ever happened to you? Okay. Um, that's what can happen. And that's what they were doing in the text. They were throwing a problem towards the leaders, and leaders often end up like that, don't they, Clayton? Yes. Too many monkeys on the desk. Do you see what I mean? So uh, a secret when it comes to conflict, which I see in the text, is that they threw back the monkey. And by doing that, 
more and more people got involved in the problem. Now, I've got three stories to finish with, and they go like this. Our youngest daughter, when she was 10, how many in the room, by the way, between the ages of 8 and 12? Any? Good, thank you. When our youngest daughter was 10, it came to Halloween. And her friends wanted to go trick-and-treating. Are you familiar with all of that language? And her friends wanted to get dressed up, you know, ghoulishly, and, and then go knocking on doors and trick and trick or treat in the hope that they'll get sweets and candy. Okay? So our daughter Jo, at 10, comes to her mum and says to mum, Mum, should I do trick and treat? What do you think? So she threw an issue at mum. And then Ruby, my wife, said, she said back to Joe, what do you think? So she threw the monkey back. Do you see what I'm getting at? She threw the monkey back. Joe got really upset. And she said, I want you to tell me what to do. I want you to sort it. What should I do? And mum said, I'm not going to tell you what you should do. What do you think you need to do? So she threw the monkey back. So what Jo eventually decided was that she would go with her friends but wouldn't do the door knocking bit. Do you know what I mean? So, but it's throwing the monkey back. I think we need to do that more with our children. You know? Instead of telling them forever what they should or shouldn't do, I mean, there's a place for telling children at times. But I just sometimes think we can overdo that. Would you, what, would you say a yes to that? Children, would you say a yes to that? If you were listening. <laughs> Here's my second story. So uh, as Clayton said, I've been involved in national leadership role and all that kind of stuff. There was a particular church... And the teenagers, by the way, any, anyone here between the age of 13 and 25? <laughs> 13 and 25, teenagers and young adults. Get this, get this. They came to the leaders of their church and they threatened that they would, a lot of them would leave. The teenagers threatened that they would leave and the young adults threatened they would leave. Why? Because of the gay issue. Because of LGBTQI+. And they said to their leaders, we need to come to a view. We need to be clear. And you're not clear. And we need you to be clear. So they threw the issue at the leaders. Okay? And then I got consulted. And... Someone consulted me, and they said, this is happening, da-da-da-da. So we've formed a committee, they said. I said, that's good, a working group, that's good. I said, by the way, have you got any of the teenagers on the committee? Oh, no. And I said, have you got any of those who self-identify as Christians but being gay on the committee? Because these two groups are the ones that were making complaint. And then they threw that, the monkey that way to the leaders. But I would say throw it back to them as well. And let the teenagers have say so. And let those that self-identify as being Christian and gay also have a voice. That's throwing the monkey back. Final story and then I'm done. In my last church that I pastored, which was in the heart of, you know, we were hard, South Auckland. Um, the elderly got really upset with the young ones in the church. All over this. All over 
the worship, the noise, the songs. Then I got really upset. Has that happened to you? Never. <laughs> they got really upset. And, you know, they started to grumble, started to complain, and it got loud enough, just like in our text, but then they threw the monkey where? At moi. At me. So, you know, so like the disciples, I had to say, look, i got enough monkeys on my desk. And by the way, this monkey doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the elderly. So I called the elderly together and we put on a really flash. I, I got this idea from Acts chapter 6. And we put on a flash afternoon tea, you know, all the cakes and biscuits that they like and da 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 da. And then got them all to sit in a big circle. And without using this language, I said, This monkey is not mine. This monkey is yours. I didn't use this language. <laughs> But I threw the monkey back at them. And basically I said, look, you are good people. You are kind people. You are smart people. You know how to resolve this. I can trust you. How about you go away and do all the research, homework, and da-da-da that you can, and then you come back with a plan. That's Acts 6. So they did, and they went to engineers, sound engineers. They got people to look at where the loud parts of the building are and, and so that then we could carefully place people in seating so that for health and safety reasons, their hearing was not impaired or damaged even further. Oh, it was brilliant. You should have seen what they came back with. And they found out with speakers that if you had them facing this way or facing that way, it affected the volume and all this kind of thing. It was all evidence-based. We didn't have a worship war. We just had an authentic community. You know, I, I did my PhD in a, a person called John Wesley. And he was an evangelist. And he, he would tell those who self-identified as not being Christian, he would, you know unashamedly talk about Jesus and at one stage you got a letter from someone how can you prove that there's a God and John Wesley wrote back come and see us did you get that come and see the ten year olds who can also be decision makers come and see us and the teenagers here in this church and the young adults and how we interact over complex issues. Come and see us where the elderly are respected and honoured and Im invited to participate. Come and see us. That's what he said. Come and see us. A beautiful, authentic community where everybody gets to have say-so. Do you like it? Do you like it? I like it. Tell the person next to you, what did you like about that? Go to it. Go to it. 